debates and decisions that are shaping our continent now in Europeans. Mornings for Vasil bring a sense of dread. He's an electrician at Bulgaria's biggest steelworks, Kremikovci. It's an industrial relic of the communist past, a super polluter. The owner, Pramod Mittal, has not lived up to promises to clean up and today it is a mammoth violator of EU environmental standards. One way or another, for anyone who works in the belly of the beast, the consequences are frightening. I can give you three examples of three colleagues in the last three months. I worked with them every day. They had to have surgery. Two of them died. The third is booked for another operation. I hope he'll get better soon. Is this linked to the work we do? I'm not a doctor, so I can't be 100% sure, but the problem was the same for all of them, intestinal cancer. Vasil has worked at Kremikovci for 24 years. The factory is in all the Bulgarian newspapers this spring because it's close to bankruptcy. The Indian owner, Pramod Mittal, has failed to keep promises to revamp the factory to meet modern Bulgarian and EU norms. At the same time, Vasil and company while away the bus ride to work at Cards, a global high-stakes poker game is in progress. It involves Bulgaria, India, Russia and Ukraine and the multinational ArcelorMittal, presided over by Lakshmi Mittal, the brother and rival of Pramod Mittal. Except the European environmental rules have nearly frozen the negotiations. The unions now have trouble believing what they hear. There is an ecological revamp plan for Kremikovci which wasn't followed at all. There's also a modernization plan that the European Commission approved, but nothing was done with it. It's important that we can live and work in a healthy environment. Will Kremikovci have to close? For as long as it doesn't meet respect for air and water rules, it doesn't qualify for an eco-permit. The potential losses are huge. 2% of Bulgaria's income and 60,000 jobs. Yet the Minister of the Economy is very clear about the prospects. The minimum investment needed to modernize the factory is in the order of 100 million euros. At least 20 million euros is needed for ecological measures. Without at least that much, the factory can't continue to work. Another day, Another environmental problem, waste management in the Bulgarian capital, Sofia. Take a deep breath and climb aboard Vladimir's rubbish truck. He and his co-workers race the clock to get the job done in the time allowed. The hardest thing about my job is traffic jams and narrow alleyways. Sometimes we just stop and move a badly parked car by ourselves, by hand, because we can't get the truck past. But this is not Sofia's main rubbish problem, it's where to put it. The European Commission has unleashed infraction proceedings against the country which has shown itself incapable of managing its waste since 2005. Here's the Novera collection holding plant, where the management has splurged on a GPS system to land a collection contract for 2009. With GPS, the city hall and the company can track its trucks all the way to Suhodol, not far outside Sofia. The police lurk permanently around the landfill site. The dump was closed in 2005, then reopened in 2007. There were protests. Sophia's mayor reached an agreement with some of the local associations in February, promising to invest in infrastructure around Suhadol and bring the dump up to environmental standards. Other associations continue to argue the site is outside the law, both European and Bulgarian. I spent my whole childhood in these beautiful fields. I kept my cows, I picked flowers, I sang songs, I played here. 
Behind me there were natural springs. They gave the best water. And now look at the place. Refuse. As far as the eye can see. <laughs> First they tried to get me to stop the protests, but I refused. Then they offered me money and I still refused. Then they made up all sorts of stuff to try to discredit me. And in the end they threatened me physically. The Bulgarian courts ruled the protesters were right. The dump hasn't done an environmental impact assessment. Sofia has appealed the ruling, since no dump means nowhere for the capital to get rid of its waste. Today's authorities are left holding a burden that started building up years ago. Where are they with the European Commission's infringement procedure? After reopening of the landfill, the infringement procedure was uh, put on, it is on standby. <laughs> And the next uh, uh, infringement, second infringement, is uh, against uh, the um, temporary storage of bales, which is an issue. We are talking about more than 500,000 tons of waste stored. The nearest incineration plant is in Austria, too far away. And all of the towns around Sofia are reluctant to accept the honor. A processing plant is in the planning stages, but it is not expected to be ready for three to four years. To reduce the quantity of waste being produced, the capital has ushered in recycling bins. But the company handling it, Ecopac, says few households have got the hang of it yet. The biggest problem that we have in our operation is the collection from household. Our current estimation shows that Approximately 30 to 35 percent of the packaging waste ends up in households and is then disposed in uh, the colored containers that we place in the streets. Uh, we cannot say that we have a very good result there. By 2020, the European Parliament is pushing to have a 50 to 70 percent recycling requirement enforced. But the EU governments for the moment are resisting. The average European produces more than half a tonne of household rubbish per year. Add in farm and industrial waste and the total is 1.8 billion tonnes. Altogether, towns and cities to handle and store their rubbish are estimated to be spending some 75 billion euros year after year. <laughs>